To say Man With Saw and Head had a lot of hype would be one of the biggest understatements I've made on this channel. Everywhere I go, I hear, this will be the anime of the year. I I'm sure you've never heard that one before. Or The Verge for what it's worth. Chainsaw Man's first episode hooked me with its gorgeously gory action. The thing is though, when I went on Twitter, everyone was actually just talking about the opening. Even the show's character designer was hyped about it, so I thought why not? I want to talk about Shingo Yamashita, I also want to go to gym, and to have a decent sleeping schedule again. So let's do something short and sweet for this week. And yeah, without further ado, let's go over why Chainsaw Man's opening looked so good. Now to discuss this opening, we obviously have to talk about the mastermind behind it, Shingo Yamashita. Yamashita is one of those creators that stands out on everything he touches, and not just to anime fans, but to creators all throughout the animation industry, and even outside of it. I mean, you literally had Jujutsu Kaisen's author himself approach Yamashita and was like, hey, you know, if this ever gets an anime, I want you to make the openings. However, what is it about this opening and his openings in general, which are so memorable? Well, that's a very hard answer and will change between each of them, but one consistent piece is his understanding of the source material. Taking those core themes woven within the pages then amplifying them all within a span of just over a minute through composition, color, camera work. Every shot is so intentional, nothing's wasted and nothing can be afforded to when dealing with such a strong vision as his. However, as I said, why each one of his openings are memorable alters naturally between each one and this one isn't an exception, as this opening brings out more than just an understanding of the manga itself, but the very author. Outside of the core references to Fujimoto's previous works, Tatsuki Fujimoto is well known for his love of film, and if you haven't gathered by the million IGN tweets about it, this opening is full of them, but also a little more. Right from the first cut, we get a direct reference to one of Sandro Bocelli's illustrations from Dante's Divine Comedy. Definitely one of the oldest references here and with artwork that cleverly takes that older aesthetic in mind with Hatching, a common feature of Bocelli's work, added to Denji. It's subtle and clever but not unexpected considering it's drawn by the series director himself, Nakamura. This smoothly fades into a tracking shot, certainly a familiar technique Yamashita never hesitates to use. But always great to see. Into the following cuts, it's easy to get lost simply with the sheer amount of references, especially in the fascination of diversity and not just genre but time periods they come from. However, chalking up this opening to just some cool references would be missing what makes this opening great. Cool ideas are one thing, but execution is another, which brings us to the second point compositing. This area is crucial to bringing the visual side together, taking the backgrounds, the now completed animation, 3D assets, if any were created, and lacing it all together. Now adding them together is one thing, but it's making it all feel cohesive where the true task lies, and achieving a sense of depth within it all is another thing again, but one where Yamashita's work shines best and in such a vibrant way. One common technique he uses is blur. Very easy to apply, but it's another thing to wield effectively. And of course, Yamashita certainly does. In this cut, he uses a rack focus. It brings the various characters in and out of focus, giving a sense of space between them and thus depth. For this one, it's shallow focus. The majority of the image is soft with the center having a sharper edge. It also draws your attention to the focal point, as well as in this instance, giving it a romantic feeling. It's of course quite cinematic, imitating the types of focus you get when using an actual camera. Now, lighting likewise can play an integral role to creating depth, although the atmosphere is more specifically what I want to focus in on. Now, firstly, what's interesting is just simply the types of it and how often they switch. You can go from a warm, brightly lit room to a closed off one with a muted and cold palette, then another darker scene, but this time with a warmer palette. It gives such a distinctive feel to each cut of his openings and personally for me adds to the replayability behind them. Now that aside, let's get a bit more specific as to why it looks good and feels realistic. Now there are many reasons I could point to, but one is edge control. If you're a painter, that's no doubt a familiar term and probably a little of an odd one to hear about in regards to anime, and here's why. The standard method of adding shadow to 2D characters is cell shading. Of course, quite a simplified method compared to a painting. It's actually what I've used for my character here. However, the shadows are always hard, the edges don't change. Now you can soften their appearance through lighter values and gradients, a great method which Yamashita certainly uses by the way, and quite effectively. 
However, in Yamashita fashion, he goes a step further. Back to this shop, look at this area here. Since his collar is blocking out the light, there's a strong shadow cast. Most anime, like I mentioned, would just use a hard shadow such as this one for the rest of the character. Although on this side of Denji's neck, as well as other areas, Yamashita's actually soften the shadows to represent when light's directly hitting an object, which causes it to diffuse. You can also see a soft yellow color added on the edge to represent the fall off of light. Again, a very common technique used by painters and illustrators, but quite a rarity in anime. It goes without saying how well this makes a character, or characters in this case, feel part of the environment. It's why there's that strong sense of warmth. And on a side note, I mentioned on Twitter how a lot of the shading in this episode had a painterly feel, and the artist behind this drawing, Moang, especially embodies that. And it of course blends perfectly with Yamashita's style. And you know what, let's do another example. Here, Yamashita's used ambient light to give some more realism. To be more specific, the light rays are coming in from this direction and bouncing off the red sofa and diffusing on his hands. Now, I said earlier I would be kinda downplaying the opening if I was just listing off movie references as to why the opening's so good, but the same would go for just chalking up the credit all to Yamashita. As beautiful as these images are in isolation, it wouldn't mean as much if they didn't actually move. And that brings us to the third and final point, animation. Now, there are so many great bits by the various animators, but for the sake of time, I'll pick out the ones that personally stuck out to me most. And that main one is this scene by Koki Fujimoto, who coincidentally we only just looked at for his work on Mob Psycho, which was of course impressive, he's a very skillful animator. Although the fact that so many people were thinking his work in this episode was rotoscoped really does speak to that. Anyways, back to it, the character acting here is what grabbed me. The actions themselves are very goofy and fun. The movement is timed out well with a lot of detail paid to, especially how the fabric moves and how it loosens and tightens. A lot of solid poses as well, it makes it all feel quite lifelike. Also, clever transition by Yamashita with Aki, using him summoning the fox devil to conclude the opening is really cool. Second is the bowling scene, which is again by Fujimoto. However, what got me was how animated the background characters were. Now, Fujimoto already would have had his hands full. He has the most cuts in the opening, was all over the first episode. So instead of just using stills for the background characters and, and putting that extra time in for something a lot of people would miss, definitely deserves a mention. And generally, I think it's a large part in what brings such an alive feeling to that cut. Now, the third and final is Tam Lu, another freelancer who also was lead animator on Castlevania and brings probably one of the most stylistically unique cuts out of everyone. Line work is completely removed, relying entirely on shape. The brush strokes are rough, perfectly syncing with the nature of the scene and with erratic movements and effects, creating one energetic animation. And actually, coincidentally, only a couple of months ago, he posted some fan animation, which looked very similar. But yeah, really cool to see such a bunch of idiosyncratic animators for this opening. And considering Yamashita's roots, it's perfectly fitting. But with that though concludes why Chainsaw Man's opening looked so good. So thank you everyone for watching and please check out our sponsor Fandom Eon. It helps support the channel and shout out to my patrons who also do. And with that, again thank you for watching and I'll see you later.